uh, <laughs> I don't know how to explain this show. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what direction this company is going towards post Survivor Series, but I, this is one of the few times where I'm just confused. <laughs> As to what's going on. <laughs> what the fuck? What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Lee Walk 71 Replace the with a four. And I'm here with my WWE Survivor Series review for you guys in the year of 2018. This show... I don't know how to feel about this show. <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't a bad show. But it wasn't a good show. It was a show, to say the absolute least about it. I don't know how to feel about this damn show. What the fuck? Bro, like, if you want to know what's the A show, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. What the fuck? Okay, so... Okay, so we have Survivor Series, the year 2018, you know. Uh, let's just get into this review. We had the kickoff show match. We had Raw versus SmackDown, a 5-on-5 tag team traditional Survivor Series elimination match. Five teams on Raw, five teams on SmackDown. They compete. It was supposed to be for brand supremacy, but then it came to my attention that the pre-show match didn't even count. And this is the only match that SmackDown won. <laughs> what the fuck? Who, who books this shit? <laughs> okay, so if you wanna if you care to know who's on each team, for a team raw, we had the team of Chad Gable and Bobby Roode, the Ascension, Lucha House Party, the Revival, and the B team versus everybody on Team SmackDown, which was the Usos, the New Day, the Colognes, Sanity, Gallows and Addison. After the New Day, the rest of those teams, I haven't seen on TV in over a month. Okay, so, uh, New Day comes out first, and, you know, they hype the uh, their, the match up, their teams and everything, and then, uh, what did they do? They said Raw, Xavier Woods said Monday Night Raw, and LA booed Raw, because Raw sucks right now. He said it two more times, and they booed it again. So, uh, how do I, what's how I feel about this match? This match was... I wouldn't say predictable, but it was predictable. But it didn't pick up until the last two teams on each side were left because they got rid of all the teams that nobody cares about. <laughs> the Colognes got eliminated. Then uh, the Ascension got eliminated. Then Sanity got eliminated. Uh, they've been back and forth with for eliminations because after uh, Sanity got eliminated, uh no, I think it was the Colognes. <sighs> Listen, I don't remember. Just know all the tag teams that nobody cares about got... Oh, I forgot the B team was in this match. They got eliminated in between there. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. The teams that nobody cares about or that don't get any screen time got eliminated early, which include the Ascension, Gallows and Anderson, uh, the B team, <laughs> uh, Sanity... The Colognes, if I hadn't said that already. Lucha House Party got eliminated by, uh, damn. I don't remember. It don't matter. They got eliminated. So, I would say the highlight of this match was towards the end of it where they just said, fuck it. We'll just start doing a bunch of high-flying stuff. So, you had people jumping over to the outside you had Chad Gable do a German suplex from the top rope to the outside and to a bunch of people. There was one spot where Jimmy Uso super kicked Bobby Roode. He had, like, Bobby Roode was, like, mid-glorious. Like, he's about to do his glorious thing. And then, uh, I think it was Jay Uso. It was Jay Uso. Came in with the super kick. Then did the Uso, but he did it in Bobby Roode fashion in terms of the glorious gimmick. Jumped over to the outside into everybody, and then we start getting more eliminations as we had uh Gable and Jordan get eliminated. Gable and Jordan, Gable and Rude got eliminated when um the Usos hit a pop up um 
Samoan drop for elimination. Then the New Day eventually got eliminated by the Revival from a Shatter Machine. And then he came down to the Usos and uh, the Revival, which is a match I kind of want to see now because they actually kind of worked good for the few minutes they had. And it was actually entertaining. And then we got to the end where the Usos won. <laughs> so the Usos won in the only match that SmackDown won tonight. And it didn't even count because as soon as the show started and we had the women's Survivor Series match, they said, well, yeah, SmackDown won the match, but it was on the kickoff show. So it doesn't really matter. That's tough. That's really tough. WWE's bogus. They they, they kind of bogus for that. So then we got we open up the show with the uh, Raw versus SmackDown five on five women's traditional Survivor Series elimination match. We got Team Raw, which consisted of Miss Facebreaker, as she's calling herself now, Nia Jax, who got booed every time she stepped in the ring. She got booed because you know she ruined the match that everybody wants to see when she punched Ronda Rousey. When she punched, not Ronda Rousey, when she punched Becky Lynch in the face and caused her to have a quote-unquote broken face and a severe concussion. Uh, Tamina Snuka, Ember Moon. I forgot Ember Moon was even in this match. That's great. Oh, what? Bruh, come on, man. Wrestling, y'all gotta get y'all ish together, bro. Y'all didn't put the wrong people in this match. It was Nia Jax, Tamina Snuka, Sasha Banks, Bayley. Huh. She was in that match, I guess. See, I don't even pay... Bro, hold on. Hold up. She, Ember Moon was not in this match, was she? I don't... Bro, I'm going to keep it a buck fifty. No, it was Mickey James. What? Yeah, Mickey James, not Ember Moon. And before, on the kickoff show, it was supposed to be Natalia and Ruby Riot in the match, but then I guess they got into a, a brawl or something, a fight. So Alexa Bliss said, I'm replacing you two, and then they brought in Sasha Banks and Bayley. Uh, Team SmackDown was Naomi, who was named captain after Charlotte took Becky's place in the uh, women's one-on-one match. Sonya Deville, Oscar, Carmella, and then they put Mandy Rose in the match. It was pretty much obvious if you watched SmackDown because she cut a promo saying that she should be in the match, so she was in the match. And we got to this match. It was, you know, it's, it's whatever. Uh, Naomi got eliminated quick by Tamina. Then Tamina got eliminated quick by um, somebody. It was somebody who rolled her up. And then it just turned into whatever. Uh, like I said, Nia Jax got booed out the arena every time. There was one spot where she ran towards Asuka. Asuka was on the um, turnbuckle, moved out the way. She went shoulder first into the uh, ring post. The crowd cheered. Then Asuka kicked her in the face and started stomping on her. The crowd was going nuts for Asuka. Any important eliminations? Carmella got eliminated from Bailey from a, a Bailey to Belly. Uh, Sonya Deville and Bailey actually got double eliminated from a count out. They just both took each other out, I guess. Uh, I forgot what happened to Mandy Rose. I think Mandy Rose got put in the, uh, in the, uh, bank statement. We'll say that. She got eliminated like that. I'm sorry, bro. I can't pay attention to this shit. This shit sucks. It's not that it sucks, but it's, I don't know. I, I didn't care for this match. I'm sorry. I didn't care for this match. Not one bit. So, let's see. We get to the end of the match. So, the end of the match would turned out to be Asuka versus Nia Jax and Sasha Banks. So, Sasha Banks and Asuka were going at it for a quick, sec for a quick second. They was trading offense and stuff like that. Then, uh, Sasha Banks decided to get on the top rope. Uh, Nia Jax put Sasha Banks off the top rope, which is stupid because that's her teammate, but whatever. Asuka hit the Asuka lock. She made Sasha Banks tap out. Then Nia Jax hit three leg drops on Asuka. Then hit the Samoan drop. Pinned her. One, two, three. Eliminated. Team Raw won the match. Uh, That pretty much describes Asuka career. We give her a little momentum. And then we just, you know, shut it down quick. Quick and easy. Get, get her out the paint. You know, it's not like Asuka is a good wrestler and can actually carry the women's division. But, you know, get her out the paint quick. Uh, I guess they're trying to build Nia Jax up. Uh, because, you know, she won the women's evolution battle royal in which she gave somebody someone a concussion in that match as well uh <laughs> so she's the next uh number one contender against ronda rousey so we got to make her look strong and that's what they did they booed la booed out the arena because you know you know she ruined the match that everybody wants to see and kind of killed the hype for this pay-per-view uh so after that we got the next match which was a match i was sort of looking forward to but i knew because it's wwe it's not gonna be good there's a 50 percent chance it's gonna be good and there's a 50 percent chance it's gonna be bad 
And that was Seth Rollins, the Intercontinental Champion, versus the United States Champion, who I forgot was the United States Champion because that title doesn't exist. Shinsuke Nakamura, that name sounds familiar? I know. He, we don't know where he's at either. This is just some Asian dude in Shinsuke Nakamura's attire, and he just replicates his move. The real King of Strong Style, I don't know where he went. I, he disappeared because this dude, I don't know who the, I don't know who the hell this is. Anyways, we get to the match. Standard match, in my opinion. It was okay. They were doing certain things. Shinsuke got his Strong Style stuff. What everybody does in every Shinsuke match is they copy Shinsuke and do the come on thing. <laughs> uh seth rollins did stuff shinsuke did stuff they did a forearm trade you know new japan call back to new japan uh nakamura hit a kinshasa to the back of seth's head for a near fall seth ended up hitting a, a v trigger we're not gonna call it the rip knee. it's a it's a it's a v trigger a rainmaker v trigger hit that for a near fall then eventually uh shinsuke tried to go for another kinshasa seth rollins got out of it super kick curb stomp win Boom, that, there you go. Uh, I thought Dean Ambrose would have uh, got involved in this match and had Shinsuke uh, win. But no, they just said, fuck it. We're just going to have Shinsuke lose to Seth because, you know, fuck you. That's why. Fuck a King of Strong Style. Fuck a Shinsuke Nakamura. Fuck a, a you. Um, that was racist. Uh, yeah, so then, but later on in the night, they announced that Dean and Seth are going to face each other in a TLC match at TLC. So that should be interesting. So the next match we got was the Raw versus SmackDown tag team champions match so we have the raw tag team champions the authors of pain versus the smackdown tag team champions the bar sheamus and cesaro with the big show now this match was meh it was okay i guess but there was something that happened outside of the match that i'm going to talk about because that was more entertaining than the match itself and that is your boy enzo amore this dude wild bro hold on let me get my ears on real quick let me get my drink let me get my drink Oh, I need my drink. Okay, this man Enzo, right? This man Wilder. Okay, so first of all, he shows up to a WWE event, right? In a terrible disguise. You could clearly see that it's Enzo. He put a hood on, had on a black wig. So during the match, he got up. He had ringside seats. So he was like maybe one or two rows behind the front row. And, uh, or he might have been just right behind it. I forgot. It was either one or two or right behind it. Starts cutting the promo. His usual Enzo pro <laughs> Amore promo had the replica WWE Championship. And then the lady, there's a lady security guard. She's like at all WWE events. But if you remember specifically, she was the security guard that almost tried to squat up with uh, Rob Gronkowski at WrestleMania 33 in the Andre the Giant uh, Battle Royals. She was trying to squat up with the man's i actually seen her when i went to the backlash that was right after that people were like actually marking out to her because <laughs> that's what wrestling fans do we just mark out to the dumbest things and we get over anything if we want to uh so <laughs> that's exactly what happened she tackled that man she literally grabbed that brother and threw him across to the outside he was like oh, okay and he got escorted out the arena he was there trying to promote because he has a uh a, a, a performance in la on monday apparently like uh so yeah he shows up to his former employer to get his rap career over because nobody listens to enzo amore's rap career nobody does the only reason people listen to it is because it sucked <laughs> that that's how i feel about enzo amore he made it pretty much an ass of himself but hey i guess you gotta do what you gotta do to survive it in these streets sometimes you gotta sell re-rock to make it in these streets apparently so let's get back to the actual match the highlight of the match because on the pre-show, Drake Maverick was saying he's not scared of the big show. So I knew they were going to do something and I didn't think it was going to happen like this. So what they did was they had the big show grab uh, Drake Maverick after um, Drake Maverick grab. I think it was Aiken or Razor's foot on the rope. One of them two. And then the big show grab <laughs> Drake Maverick. Put him back on the thing on the uh, apron and Drake Maverick peed himself. At first, I thought. I don't know why. There's something wrong with me, and I have to get it checked out one day. I thought Drake Maverick, I thought they were trying to do a thing where he got hard. No homo. No, no homo. <laughs> what the fuck is this show? <coughs> this man peed himself. 
a grown ass man <laughs> peed himself because the Big Show was choking him. I thought he was getting hard and then it was going to be, we're embarrassing him. And no, he peed himself. And then AOP took advantage of it, hit the powerbomb neck breaker and won the match. Boom. There you go. See, uh, the Enzo thing was way better. So <laughs> after that, we got what I thought would might be my match of the night, which uh, surprisingly made it onto the main card, which was the WWE Cruiserweight Championship match. As we have Mustafa Ali, the uh, challenger, I was about to say the champion, the challenger, take on the champion, Buddy Murphy. Now, both of these men came out to no reaction whatsoever, but ended the match with a 205 Live chant that I never heard before and a This Is Awesome chant. Two chants you will never hear at a Cruiserweight match because the Cruiserweights, if you watch 205 Live, you know the Cruiserweights be going hard. And I actually watch 205 Live most of the times. There's sometimes where I like, I see a match, I'm like, eh. I'll pass, but the next week I watch a match. I'm like, okay, I, okay, I see. Okay, cool, cool. Cause you know they film it. Well, they used to film it after SmackDown went off the air. Now they film it before, but they just never get those loud reactions. They be having some really, really, really good matches. Like the other matches with Ali and Buddy Murphy was good. Ali and I mean, uh, not Ali. Uh, Buddy Murphy and Cedric. Uh, Cedric Alexander and uh, what's that dude's name? Uh. Drew Gulak, that was a good match. I had a lot of good matches. It's just that people don't react because it's either before it was half of them left and they're just dead because they just sat through two hours of SmackDown or since they filmed it before, people are not filling in because they're still trying to get into the arena. So by the time they get there, show's pretty much over. But this match, I was so surprised they put they didn't put this on the kickoff show because they haven't, uh, they always put this match on the kickoff show. This is like the first time in a minute that the Cruiserweight Championship match was actually on the show. It surprised me. So, if you've seen a Buddy Murphy and, and um, I was Cedric Ali, a Buddy Murphy and Mustafa Ali match, then you know these two go hard. It was a lot of a flying, high flying offense. Buddy Murphy did get some power stuff in as he like did redid the spot that but that uh, Mustafa Ali did before, where he gets pushed off of the top rope into the uh, barricade. Working on a bag, Buddy Murphy hit a, uh, I think it's called a Tope Con Hilo. I, I hope I'm saying that shit right. You know where he flips over the top rope to the outside. Mustafa Ali hit uh, moves. He hit his little super kick combo that was nice. And then hit a um, reverse Hurricane Rana for a near fall. Uh, uh, Mustafa Ali, this is what got the 205, let, uh, 205 chant was that he hit a... Uh, Spanish fly off of the announce table to the uh, floor. That was pretty cool. Then the ending of it was amazing. It, it was it was lit. The ending of it. Mustafa Ali tried to go for his little DDT where he like jumps and twists and goes for DDT. Uh, uh, Buddy Murphy said, fuck what you talking about. Let me hit you with this V trigger real quick. And it hits the Murphy's off for the win. Great match. If there is one match you have to watch, it's going to be this. And surprisingly enough, the name Brown match. Uh... <laughs> Watch this match. This match was really good. I think this is a, a step in the right direction for 205 Live in terms of them getting back to being on TV so the wrestlers are actually known so they can actually get real crowd reactions. And as for Mustafa Ali, I feel like what they should do, or maybe this is what they're trying to do, they're trying to build him up maybe, give him these significant losses so that he wins at WrestleMania next year. That would be a, a good story if they uh do that, but I, I don't know. We, we just have to see, I guess, whenever the next episode 205 Live. So the next match we got was the Raw versus SmackDown 5-on-5 five five men's traditional Survivor Series elimination match. It's a mouthful of words. So we had Team Raw, Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, Drew McIntyre, Finn Balor, Bobby Lashley, with the team captain being the acting Raw general manager, the one... And only Ricochet. This uh, SmackDown team was, once again, Shane McMahon, Jeff Hardy, The Miz, Samoa Joe, and Rey Mysterio. With the captain being The Miz, who was already on the team. So, <laughs> the, before the match started, there was already tension being built up between Braun Strowman and Drew McIntyre. At this, they've been doing this for a minute. And then Samoa Joe tried to go for the Coquina Clutch. Drew McIntyre hit a Claymore kick on Joe. One, two, three. He out of here. WWE is done with Samoa Joe. They might as well just release this motherfucker now. Because they didn't bury my mans. He got buried, bro. They gave him the Mark Henry, dude. 
if you remember the Survivor Series match for 2014 when they was hyping Mark Henry up and he was like, yeah, I'm going to kill this dude. And the Big Show knocked him out and got him out the paint. And that's exactly what they did with this match. They got Joe out like that. And he's supposed to be the, the destroyer, the Samoan submission machine. No, that's TNA. Never mind. Uh, he's supposed to be the the Samoan submission specialist. Uh, and we got him out of there like Thanos said, get the fuck up out of there. Anyways, the match was actually not that bad. I, I, I enjoyed uh, most parts of it. It just, you know, I guess since we're trying to just bury SmackDown, because SmackDown got molested this year. Uh, pretty much, people got... <laughs> I would say... My favorite part of the match was the small exchange between Rey Mysterio and Finn Balor. That was actually pretty cool. Uh, I also like Drew McIntyre in this match because, A, he never got eliminated. And, B, he didn't care what team he was on. He would beat up his own teammates. Uh, let me see. Let's see. There was a spot where they basically do the same thing they do to Braun Strowman every year. Put him through a table. And that's what they did. <laughs> they put Braun Strowman through a table last year. They put him through a table, I believe, two years ago. And they put him through a table this year with the same person putting him through the table, which was Shane. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know why they do this every year. They're going to do it next year. I bet. They're going to do it next year. Exactly. Uh, So that happened. Both Shane and Braun was dead. So the men in the ring was Ray. And Dolph, and eventually Dolph got eliminated by Shane McMahon, ironically, best in the world. Uh, Shane McMahon hit the coast to coast, eliminated Dolph. So then, after that, I believe Rey Mysterio got in. Uh, I don't, I don't remember how Rey Mysterio got eliminated. But Rey Mysterio had a small exchange with Finn Balor. Finn Balor tagged himself in on Drew McIntyre because he was actually reaching for a tag on Drew, and Drew was looking at him like, "Nah, B." So he ended up tagging uh, Drew McIntyre's back. So he had a small exchange with Rey Mysterio. Eventually, Rey Mysterio got the best of Finn, hit the 619, eliminated Finn Balor, and then eventually Drew McIntyre got Finn Balor out the paint. I believe he hit him with a Claymore kick. So after that, let's see. Let's, let's see. Let's, let's see what happened. So... Yeah, uh, I'm out of order with this match, by the way. Uh, <laughs> uh, man, let me read this. Let me let me read this because I don't remember half of this match. My my memory has faded. Uh, uh, Ray kick drop kicks Drew from behind, goes for six one nine, but lastly tags in and hits Ray with the big boot. Uh, lastly. He had hit that, that suplex on Rey Mysterio where he held him in the air. And, uh, I don't, I, no, no, no. Bobby Lashley did get in the match for like 10 seconds. I'm really trying to sit up here and read what happened because I don't remember what happened in this match. Uh... Yeah, so basically, this 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 is a. I'm sitting there stuttering. This is how we gonna do this. Basically, Bobby Lashley did stuff. Drew McIntyre did stuff, and then Braun came in and just eliminated everybody. End of the match. Like I'm not even gonna lie to you. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you, bro. As soon as Braun got in the match, the match was over with. He eliminated Rey Mysterio. Rey Mysterio tried to go for a six. No, first he eliminated Jeff Hardy. Boom, got him out the paint. Rey Mysterio tried to go for a six one nine. Got caught up by Braun, got hit with a, uh, I was just saying F5, a power slam, got Rey Mysterio out of there. So then it came down to the Miz. The Miz got out the ring. Braun Strowman went for his little thing where he runs around the rings and shoulder tackles. But this time, Miz pushed Shane out of the way. I thought Shane got eliminated, but he didn't. Uh, he pushed him out the way. The Miz got back into the ring and eventually got hit with a uh, running power slam. He got out of there. Shane McMahon basically told Braun, uh, come on. And then he hit Shane with the running power slam and brought one. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, honestly, this match wasn't bad. But since it wasn't the focal point of the pay-per-view, I don't know. I, I don't feel like there was any stakes on the line. Especially when the, when the score was 3-0. And there was only three more brand matches. And even if SmackDown would have win all three of those brand matches, which they weren't. 
it would have been like 3-3 and then it would be a very confusing show. So it was like, I didn't care who won this match. It was like, okay, all right, uh, okay. So after that, we got the Ronda Rousey versus, uh, Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte Flair match. Um, this match was originally supposed to be Ronda Rousey and Becky Lynch. Ended up turning into this match because, you know, like I mentioned earlier, Nia Jax knocked Becky Lynch in the face, gave her a quote-unquote broken face and a severe concussion, so she couldn't compete. So we got this match instead, and this match was sloppy, but not sloppy in a bad way. Sloppy in a, okay, I understand type of thing, because this is Ronda Rousey's first real opponent. You know, before this, Ronda Rousey has been facing mediocre, average to not that good wrestlers like she's been facing she listen she, in her first match she faced stephanie mcmahon that was for her to look good the next match was uh what's what's, what's that girl's name nia Jax, and that match was cool i guess uh then after that she faced um what's that chick's name bro all the, the, the chick y'all overhyped oh alexa bliss uh she beat her in like minutes and she was talking the whole time uh nikki bella okay wrestler she beat her this, uh, Charlotte Flair, an amazing wrestler. So we had this match, and it was basically Char it was uh, uh, Ronda Rousey's first real opponent, and it made us in the match made it seem like she was actually trying to fight to get a one up on Charlotte. There was one spot where Ronda Rousey got elbowed in the face and her mouth started bleeding, so it kind of made the match a little bit better from a visual standpoint. And also, if you want to tell a story that way, you could. Uh, but these women, you know, these women did their thing you know charlotte hit a, a mean ass spear on ronda rousey when she did her kip up ronda rousey um sold a lot in this match too she took a uh a figure four and she sold like hell um ronda rousey did get her fair share of moves she hit a little spinning samoan drop or whatever you call it uh she went for the arm bar but eventually charlotte got out of it and then we got to the end of the match where basically Ronda Rousey ran to Charlotte and Charlotte took a Kendo stick and just wham whack uh, Ronda Rousey and start going Sandman on her ass. She just started beating her with the Kendo stick. Wow, 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 wow! Just start beating her with the Kendo stick. Then she got she put her in the ring. She grabbed a chair. The referee stopped her. The funniest part was that Charlotte is taller than the damn referee. She looked at the referee, or looked down, I should say, on the, at the referee, got out the ring, right? But she still placed the chair in front of Ronda Rousey. She got back, hit the natural selection, face first on the chair. Then eventually she took the chair, folded it on Ronda's neck, and stomped on it. That was savage. And then uh, she left. The spirit of Becky has gotten in to Ronda Rousey. Now, there's no reason as to why they did this i'm still kind of confused as to what they're going with this if they're still going to do the ronda charlotte match at mania which is not the move now because as you can see everybody wants to see that becky and ronda match i don't know what they're gonna do with this match because if you wanted to do the mania match between them two you could because this is something that can set something up you could have ronda be like I had her, I almost had her beat, and then she just did that to me. Like, you already know Ronda Rousey is going to talk about that. Um, but then again, she also wants to face Becky, so I don't know what they're going to do in terms of Mania match because I know they're going to put Ronda Rousey in a high-profile WrestleMania match uh, next year. It's, like, been the talk of the town. So, I guess I just have to continue to watch Raw, unfortunately, and SmackDown to see... Uh, where they're going with this. I hope they don't waste it and just be like, oh, she just had a, a blackout moment, you know, uh, but whatever. So the next match we got was the match that I wasn't looking forward to, but it ended up becoming a really good match. Uh, we had the Raw, the final match of the night, Raw versus SmackDown World Champions, as we had the Universal Champion, Barack Lesnar, take on the new WWE Champion, a heel Daniel Bryan, or... American Dragon, Daniel Bryan. Oh, my God. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, <laughs> we got the match. Uh, we got heel Daniel Bryan. If you're saying to yourself, where's AJ Styles? AJ Styles died, okay? He died uh, after he died in a, in, a, in, a, in a match against Daniel Bryan, apparently, because he didn't show up at all. No, he didn't die 
Uh, but he did lose the WWE Championship to Daniel Bryan. And then Daniel Bryan proceeded to turn heel. Uh, stomp AJ in the face. And then we got this match instead. Daniel Bryan came out with a more black. He had black knee pads, black pants. And he had little to no design on his trunks. But his trunks were still black. And his entrance was weird because he came out. He started to do the yes chant. But then the fans knew, oh, we don't fuck with you now. So he stopped doing the yes chant, had the little smirk on his face, and then he started crawling down the ramp and then got to the ring. And, yeah, and then Brock Lesnar pulled up eventually. And we had the match. Now, before I get to this match, because this match was actually good, I had very low expectations for this match because I'm like, bro, how do you expect me to watch a match with two heels going against each other? What? Like, no. And, and listen... I'm totally fine with the Daniel Bryan heel turn because Daniel Bryan was getting stale on TV. I'm fine with the Daniel Bryan heel turn if it was after Survivor Series. Or if y'all elaborated it more on Survivor Series. But I guess we're just going to have to wait and see on SmackDown. Anyways, this is what happened. The match started. Brock, uh, Daniel Bryan was basically trolling Brock. He tried to kick him in the leg and then eventually... He got out the ring, start running around the ring, basically trolling Brock. Brock got outside of the ring. He got back into the ring. And then Brock went to work for a good minute. He starts suplexing Daniel Bryan. He clocked Daniel Bryan ahead. I was like, oh, that's concussion number one. Then he hit him with a German suplex. That was concussion number two. Then he basically just started suplexing Daniel Bryan. And Daniel Bryan did have like little small smirks on his face because I guess, you know, they're trying to, you know, make him seem like he's tough. Whatever. It's cool. It's cool. Uh, You know. And then what did he do after that? He did some. Oh. Uh, Brock put him in a bear hug. Then eventually he F5 Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan kicked out. He went for another F5. Um, but eventually Brock F5 Daniel Bryan. Bryant's feet kicked the referee in the face. Bryan hit a low blow on Brock. Hit the running knee for a near fall. Then eventually Ryan started getting offense in. Daniel Bryan started getting offense in. Kicking. A lot of kicking. Stomping Brock Lesnar's face in. Then eventually we get to the outside where Dane Bryan went for like a, uh, he launched himself to the outside. Brock caught him. Eventually, Dane Bryan was able to switch the momentum and throw Brock into the uh, ring post. Brock eventually got stairs. He tried to ram the stairs into Dane Bryan's face and eventually he went face first to the stairs. Then Dane Bryan had a suicide dive, get back into the ring. Uh, eventually, Brock tried to go for another F5. Um... Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Daniel Bryan started working on the leg again. I believe he went for another running knee for a near fall. Then uh, Brock tried to go for an F5. And then Daniel Bryan, uh, well, Brock sold his leg because he uh, Daniel Bryan did work on the leg. He was kicking the shit out of his leg. Uh, went for that. Daniel Bryan put the yes lock in or whatever they're going to call it now. If they're going to call it the label lock again or I don't know what they're going to they call it. Put him in there. Uh, Brock Lesnar... Tried to get out of it. Daniel Bryan started uppercutting Brock like really hard. Like it looked pretty real. I'm pretty sure he was. And then eventually Brock hit an F5 and won the match. <laughs> this was a good match. I'm not even going to lie. This was a good match. I was not expecting. Well, I was expecting Daniel Bryan to get the offense in. But it made it seem like Daniel Bryan was actually like an equal to Brock for one second. Just like the AJ match last year, ironically enough. Uh, as for the direction, I don't know what the hell they finna do. Uh, they should have had AJ come out and kind of like do something. Like, like if you want to make Daniel Bryan like a real, no, I wouldn't even say a real threat. You could have had it to a point where he had Brock in the in the uh, yes lock and Brock was about to tap out. Then AJ Styles music hits. Daniel Bryan gets distracted and then Brock hits the F five, basically making it seem like Brock got lucky and he escaped Daniel Bryan. You can make Daniel Bryan seem strong that way. But anyways. Good match. Uh, SmackDown loss to Raw. The score was 6-0 to zero because the pre-show match does not matter, apparently. I don't know. I mean, honestly, if you are if you are not stupid, you would know that if you were doing a six, not six, a seven-game series, because that's basically what it would have been if they counted that match, you have to do the best four out of seven. That's how the NBA Finals work. So... If you would have counted that match, the the score is really 6-1. <laughs> and and, 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 <clears throat> and why can't I speak? In 
any NBA final game, it would never go to that. But you know what? Why am I trying to explain this dumb shit? You know what? Fuck it, bro. I'm not gonna sit up here and explain this shit because I I can't I can't think of it. Also, let me let me say one thing. There was people that were really sitting up here thinking that we were going to get American Dragon Daniel Bryan. We got little, 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 um, little things of it, you know, in terms of his aggressiveness. But fuck out of here, dog. Bro, the day Daniel Bryan turned heel, I got blocked on Instagram from a wrestling page that I actually, like, really fucked with for a second. I got blocked because I said this match is going to suck. I said, no, no, no. My exact words was that, ew, this match. I, no, I said, ew. <laughs> Because I'm an asshole. I said, ew, y'all can have this match. This ain't it. Or some, something along the line. And I got blocked. Like, nigga, it ain't that damn serious. Motherfucker, it's fucking wrestling, dude. This shit ain't real. What the fuck you blocking people for? Because I have a different opinion than yours. Fuck, nigga. Anyways, we gonna keep... <laughs> the black side came out of me. Anyway, the only side. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I need help. Anyway, guys, like, comment, favorite, subscribe. Do what you do to support me. Follow me on all my... <laughs> I can't believe I said this. <laughs> Follow me on all my social media links down in the description below. Anyway, guys, I'm out. Peace. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, P. <laughs>